Yes, uh, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you are. Um, again, it's welcome to another episode of uh, the Kumbu Kenny podcast, uh, reaching you from the belly of the beast, the heart of empire, every other, every other place is a copycat. And um, uh, again, my name is Adesa Jiginla. Um, welcome. And uh, we'll begin introductions. Uh, first, the sister in struggle. Uh, care to introduce yourself? Hello, it's Nduku again. For those of us who are living in the imperial world, um, the lands of exploitation, uh, today is apparently a day to order, honor mothers as if other days are not. Right. So happy Mother's Day to all of you who will be celebrating. I am looking forward to having brunch. That is one of my favorite meals. So I'm looking forward to that uh, with my loved ones. I, I hope that you all have a restful mothers, that is, that you, and mothers who, because we have different types of mothers, right? We have mothers who give birth to children and mothers who nurture children. Um, so to all of you, uh, may you be honored on this day. May you enjoy a restful and appreciative day. Happy Mother's Day. And uh, yes, again to uh, the one and only African who happened to have discovered the river, <laughs> on the, on the, the others continent. are copycats <laughs> on the European Thank continent. You. Thank you for the props, uh, comrade. Yes, uh, please introduce yourself Thank so you. that they know who the discoverer is. You know, sometimes I forget about that. You know, <laughs> so my good brother in the UK is talking about my discovery of that strange river running through London mm -hmm. that I renamed River Gulu. I think the natives had some funny name. What did they call it again? <laughs> Thames, Thames of Towns, I don't even know what to call it. Thomas. <laughs> so, folks, you can go on Twitter and Google my discovery. <laughs> Nilton Alimadi, <laughs> the explorer, based right here in the United States. The last fading empire as the new empire arises, China, and we want, of course, Africa to be the next progressive empire. We will not be an imperialist empire. You know, we'll be the empire to take us back to all our roots, you know. I see, brother, of, of you're trying humanity, to get me back. <laughs> the cradle of civilization. Milton Aimadi, welcome oh. to Kumbu Kenny. I look I, forward to I today's I see you're trying episode. to get me back for giving you a coughing fit once upon a time. <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, uh, again, welcome to Kumbu Kenny. As, remember, as usual, we're here decolonizing minds. And the first point of call is um, a couple of weeks ago, uh, the United Kingdom coronated another king. Mm -hmm. And as usual, in the course of such uh, felicitations for some people, weeping for others, or cause to remember, or cause to think, uh, the usual refrain comes up. The glory of empire what yes. Britain did for the rest of the world. And there's this one that usually makes the rounds. Mm. And it is, oh, why, you know, it is um, Britain abolished the transatlantic slave trade. But um, rather than me tell you, I mean, I would, I've got a clip here. It's about three minutes. It's just for you to understand and then would uh, put the record straight. Mm. So I would uh, share my screen and present said video.
Well, I think you're right about reparations in terms of if people want it, though, what they need to do is you always need to go back to the beginning of a supply chain. Where was the beginning of the supply chain? That was in Africa. And when across the entire world, when the slavery was taking place, which was the first nation in the world that abolished sla uh, slavery? The first nation in the world to abolish it. It was started by William Wilberforce, was the British. In, in Great Britain, they abolished slavery. 2,000 naval men died on the high seas trying to stop slavery. Why? Because the African kings were rounding up their own people. They had them on cages waiting in the beaches. No one was running into Africa to get them. And I think you're totally right. If reparations need to be paid, we need to go right back to the beginning of that supply chain and say, who was rounding up their own people and having them hang up in cages? Absolutely. That's where they should start. And maybe, I don't know, the descendants of those families where they died at the, in the high seas trying to stop the slavery, that those families should receive something too, I think, at the same time. Stupid Europeans. <laughs> it's an interesting discussion, Hillary. Thank you very much. I appreciate you it. Know, don't we'll let me just to discuss in the future. History. Why didn't he come for her? He's uninformed. What did he do? Jesus. begin with that one first of well, all I, I, at first i think we don't we shouldn't spend more yeah. more, more time on this i just want to honor our haitian sisters and brothers today but that was an incident of a cnn host um asking bringing up a topic that he's uninformed about uh he should have brought an african historian or an african-american historian like professor gerald horn to be on a show like that because he would have schooled both of them Yes. This European uh, transgressor, as well as uh, uh, Brother uh, Don Lemon. You can't fault him for not responding. But we can fault him because he has a responsibility in that position. No, and he should then make you have sure to fault do CNN. Do it, do it. Absolutely. You, you can you only can... respond. You say what you know. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't say what you don't know. So, Which so... was that. Um, that type of slavery never existed in Africa. It was only after the Europeans so-called discovered the new world and needed a labor supply that they created an industry of slavery and enslavement. The type of confinement that we had in Africa, and this is to the Edo's crowd as well, was when two nations have a war or conflict, prisoners of war are taken. Yes. In every war, in all of history, these prisoners of war were then captives of the victors in that war. These prisoners of war worked in farms. These prisoners of war <laughs> became uh, craftsmen. Uh, hmm. These prisoners of war were integrated mm -hmm. into the African community in which they were captured. Many of them ended up being leaders, either military commanders in the captive uh, nations or leaders, kings of those societies. Sure. So they were integrated in society mm -hmm. after a period of time. It was not a commercial form of slavery. Nobody can go to a single African country and find a place where there were auction it blocks. It was not chattel slavery. Where people yeah. came and examined their merchandise as in the European slavery. That only occurred after Europe introduced its type of enslavement on the African continent and after uh, the Arabs introduced it on the Indian Ocean coast of Africa. So I wish Brother Don Lemon had known that, but he did not because African history is not properly taught in the United States. So that's all I have to say about that exchange. Yeah. But I'm glad you put that exchange because it sets the tone for today's conversation. Yeah. Back to you, <clears throat> sister. Oh, no. I, I was going to say Brother Adesoji is going to connect the two and lead us to who truly did what is claimed to have been done. I am listening, brother. Okay, so uh, clarification, sort clarification would be given. <clears throat> uh, Britain was not the first country to abolish slavery. Haiti 
was the first country then known as Saint Dominique. It became Haiti on January 1st. D Domingo, Brother Adesoji. Yeah, Domingo. It became January, <clears throat> it became Haiti on January 1st, 1804. Now, why is that important? That is important in the sense that this same Britain went into Haiti when the first declaration or when the first slave revolt was declared. Mm -hmm. Why? Because at that time, Haiti was the largest producer of coffee and sugar in the world. Mm -hmm. Seeing that uh, Louis had been killed in France, the French Revolution, mm -hmm. the enslaved people of Haiti at the time decided, you know what, if freedom is good for them, freedom is good for us as well. So they started a revolt. That revolt led into the independence of 1804. Britain at the time saw an opportunity and decided they wanted to go in. Talk about being pro-anti-slavery. They sent in 20,000 20, British soldiers and 5,000 German mercenaries. All of them will die out eventually within five years. The seven, eight, 793 to 798. The last of them was killed off by yellow fever. So, so much for the abolish slavery. We just need to clear the air there. So yes, today, as you might know, as you might think, uh, we are talking Haiti. People seeking agency of their own freedom and asserting their own independence. Why is Haiti's independence, why is it important to the black world? Brother Milton. Well, I would like to rephrase uh, in my response. Uh, Haiti, <clears throat> one, it's revolution, of course, mm. in 1804 after 13 years of fighting the uh, French European slavers. Mm -hmm. But Haiti, of course, is not independent, just like African countries are not independent either. I think part of the good thing with Kumbukeni is, is we can challenge every terminology that they use to dupe the yeah. world and to mm. also sedate us, mm. you know. Mm. Mm. Uh, the problem with Haiti struggling today is because it's still fighting for its independence. Mm -hmm. It won, uh, as when we're discussing African countries, we say independence on paper. So we can say Haiti also had independence on paper when it defeated the French. And then the European world has ganged up to punish Haiti for mm -hmm. its destruction of the slave regime that existed under uh, its great commanders, uh, uh, Toussaint, Louverture, uh, Dessalines. Henry Christophe. Uh, Christophe, Henry Christophe. Uh, Pétain. Uh, Pétain, Alexander, right? All those great generals. Mm. Haiti is still engaged in that war. That war has just taken a different form now. France only recognized Haiti in 1825, 24 years after its revolution. And the condition was for Haiti to repay France for the lost, quote unquote, property, hmm. the enslaved labor of Africans and the estates taken over. And last year, as you recall, the New York Times did an interesting series entitled The Ransom. Uh, I call it uh, blackmail because that's what it was. <laughs> uh, IET paid 560 plus million dollars, but translated into its impact on the economy. It impacted the economy by removing what could have been creation of income to the tune of up to $115 billion. Many Why resources did... diverted mm. from social programs, from education, from health, from infrastructure. So that was the opportunity cost impact. But Haiti was fighting on two war fronts. 
And of course, as you know, this repayment did not end until 1957, uh, more than 132 years. Hmm. 80 was fly fighting another front line, which was, of course, the other mother of imperialism, the United mm -hmm. States. The United States was very nervous by the victory of the Asians in the revolution. They did not want it to be replicated mm. in this country. Uh, people who led uprisings in this country, like Veshi, Denmark, had actually visited Haiti many times, was familiar with the revolution, and inspired him. Mm -hmm. So obviously we knew why the U.S. sided with France. <clears throat> in the 20th century, the United States invaded and occupied Haiti mm. in 1915. Haiti, the people put up resistance. Many were massacred. Mm. Their most patriotic leaders were summarily executed. executed yeah. The U.S. imposed a regime of cheap labor on Haiti. For decades, the U.S. in 1957, later on, even after with, withdrawing, maintained its imperialist control over Haiti, mm -hmm. imposed the Duvaliers, you know, Papa Doc and Baby Doc. Baby Doc, yeah. Duvalier. Francois, you know, and his son. And then the U.S. continued his interference even after Haiti mm. elected its democratic elected president, Jean Bertrand Jean Aristide. Aristide yeah. And we can go into that uh, a little bit later on. But mm. so you, you see, clearly Haiti is not yet independent. Uh, and mm. That is why it's one of the most <clears throat> impoverished countries in the world. They talk about a failed state. Mm. And by saying that, they imply that the Haitians herself, themselves are not able to create a functioning state without tying in. Why is it that Haiti is a so-called failed state? Hmm. But this is the caucasity of the Mzungu, before I answer your question, Adesoji, right? The Mzungu who goes in, rips you off all your money and your resources, and then stands on the sidelines and says, look at you, you don't know how to progress, you don't That's know right. how to develop. But you've sucked me out of everything that I could use to develop and, and progress. So you know what, Mzungu? How about we start setting the record straight and figuring out what it is that build France? Um, where you got your funds to build France? Whether it's not those sugar plantations that Haiti was the wealthiest nation at one point producing um, uh, profit for Fra yes. France. Yes. But yes. <clears throat> to answer Absolutely. your question, Adesoji, Brother Adesoji, why is this revolution important to, um, to Africans and to Africa? Um, our ancestor, Brother CLR James, says in an interview that we will post later once this video um, goes up, um, he says that he was able to write his book, Black Jacobins, because he was taking part in London with George Padmo, Jomo Kenyatta, Nkrumah, and many others. I believe Walter Rodney was one of the people who ended up in London in those meetings. I don't know right. if at the same time. But they, he says that the French Revolution, to them, was what would take place in Africa. It was what inspired him <clears throat> to write. It was what inspired them when they got back to their countries, Jomo Kenyatta and Nkrumah. Both of them the first leaders in independent <clears throat> Ghana and Kenya, um, it's what inspired them to stand up against imperialism. So what happens to a black man in one place, and I think Billy Nkrumah is the one who says this, happens to black men everywhere. If Ghana gets freedom and the rest of Africa doesn't have freedom, it is not worth anything. And so what happens in Ghana is going to inspire what happens in South Africa. And as we saw in 1960, all the, the is it the year of Africa? Um, it inspired others to rise up. Yep. When you see others succeed, it, it gives you hope. It inspires you. So that if nothing else, the French Revolution was inspiration for Africans globally to stand up against imperialism and exploiters. Absolutely. And we thank them for it and honor them for it. The reason I ask the question is, why is it important? Why mm. is... Haiti, uh, Haiti, um, Haiti's um, independence. Why is it important to the general thing? Is so that lessons can actually be learned. Mm -hmm. Now, unfortunately, 
lessons have not been learned. When Brother Milton talked about the debts Haiti had to pay to yeah. France, it's it's often called the double debts. Mm -hmm. There are people, you know, they borrowed money on the French stock exchange, used the same money to pay, quote unquote, uh, plantation owners. And where do we see this repeating itself? Nothing. You remember, you remember Mugabe. Mananagua is also now taking out a three point six billion dollar loan to recompense white landowners. If, if that's true, he, I hope he loses the election. <laughs> and and we need to have a show just and, and, on that. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, we need to look into it election. and have a show just on it. Yeah. I yeah. mean, so if that is that not itself <laughs> should be the rallying cry of the entire opposition so yep. that he loses the election. I know the type of pressure they're putting on, on, on the Zimbabwe state mm. for, you know, taking the land from the European minority and returning mm. it to oh the descendants yeah. of the people from whom the land was stolen. Mm -hmm. And I understand the weakness of uh, Zimbabwe is a victim of African disunity, Africa True. not coming together. Mm -hmm. But that mm -hmm. is the ultimate insult to the memory of Nehanda. Nehanda was the woman general who inspired the Chimorenga in the 1890s, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. She led mm -hmm. the, 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 the war, the first war of national liberation Revolution, yeah. was by Nehanda, the woman general, who was captured in the 1890s and executed uh, by hanging. And she was beheaded and her head was taken to Britain. Yeah. And up to date, the head has like not him. yet been uh, returned. And in fact, uh, Queen Victoria was the monarch at that time. And the great spectacular falls is named after the killer of Nihanda, Victoria Falls, instead of renaming it Nihanda. So that's the first insult. Now the second insult, you are taking a loan hmm. to compensate the Europeans who stole the land. Instead of compensating the descendants of the Africans who lost the land. You know, that to me is not an argument I can support, you know, regardless of the pressure. You know what they, they, they do in, uh, in Japan? Mm -hmm. That's one of the traditions I like in Japan. You know, they don't do it so much now, but historically, they would fall on the sword, sword. because some things are not worth surrendering. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought mm -hmm. that up. So that's my uh, intervention on that particular issue. It's completely wrong. I thought what you're going to say was that we mm -hmm. still have the system today in that African countries take loans right. from the World Bank and the IMF, you know? You thought it was going a, to be a general commentary. Very similar to what, 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 what AIT is doing. Mm -hmm. Took a loan to repay the debt, right? Now mm -hmm. we have the World mm -hmm. Bank and IMF going and saddling mm -hmm. Africa with the debt mm -hmm. and African countries <laughs> take loans to repay those debts. I thought that's what you were going to, to bring out, which mm. is still a good analogy anyway. But what you just brought up is even worse <laughs> example. Sorry, and I was very appropriate. The See, I have to hold myself back from insulting you know? people. I, I no, honestly no, have we shall, to. We won't insult them. Because no, but. Not, but, not our but, style here. but, but it's Brother totally Animadi, unacceptable. And I said he should lose the election. I but think that's here's, here's the thing. That. When you have been blessed with a brain and intelligence, uh, and we hope that they have been blessed with brains and intelligence, to, and they, these are leaders, so it's not like they're not aware. I'm, I'm hoping that they watch news, that they, they've seen history, unless they're just... You don't become a vice president and then a president in Zimbabwe without, you know... Right? It's the guy who actually led the war of national liberation. He was a sure. comrade with Mugabe and sure. the Bush sure. fighting the guerrilla war. So and there's like, no excuse. He just <laughs> wants to remain president at all costs. Cost, yeah. And See, as, Adesoji, as Adesoji is saying, why we should take the lessons from the past is he needs, we need to sit down and look at where Aiti is right now because of what it did. We have reports, like you said, in New York Times showing that because of that money given away, it has deprived them of progress mm -hmm. in so many areas for Absolutely. Zimbabwe not to see that 
And also, again, Actually, this is no, not just... No, no, not Zimbabwe. Nangagwa himself. But, but hold on. Not, this is how I'm going to make it I Zimbabwe. I the entire country of Zimbabwe. This is, how I'm going, this is how I'm going to make it Zimbabwe. Because it's, yes, the leader is doing this. But the people, if you do not take him off of leadership, then it will be upon you as well. It should be a drive so big that even the West can no, not maneuver when it comes to fixing elections. Yeah, so we should say our sister and brothers in Zimbabwe do the right thing. Rise up against him and okay. get him out. Okay, there, um, <laughs> it seems independence is a very emotive subject. <laughs> yes, then. I, I don't understand why people ask people ask to not have emotion when we're talking about life yeah. and death. Yeah, we're still fighting for independence. <clears throat> All of us, our sisters and brothers in Haiti, <clears throat> our sisters and brothers on the African continent, we are fighting uh, the difficult uh, issue, uh, thing is that now the actors are fellow so-called Africans, you see? Mm -hmm. so that's why it makes it a bit more difficult. We are colonialists, if, yes. If mm -hmm. we had, if Ian Smith was still the prime minister of, well, at that time it was called Rhodesia, but now it's Zimbabwe. Let's say Ian Smith, the European, was still the prime minister of what is Zimbabwe today. And Ian Smith took out a loan and said, okay, I know that you know we need to compensate the Europeans who now have to transfer the land to Africans. So I'm taking a loan so that Zimbabwe collectively through taxation can mm -hmm. repay that loan. Would that be acceptable? Of course, of course not. not. So just because a fellow African is taking Don't. that is taking that ransom, right? That's what it is, or blackmail. In fact, it should be double unacceptable hmm. as fellow Africans, you know. Okay. Um, I promise not to make it any more difficult. No, and you make it difficult because that's how it. we educate <clears throat> our people. One I think that the... was probably the best point that was brought up so far today. Okay. You know, that's how we open our people's minds so to show our sisters and brothers in other African countries, if your ruler does something similar to what Nagangwa has just done, no <laughs> way. Let that inspire you, outrage you into doing the right thing. Be demanding. Brother Adesoji, you came for our, our brother Milton. must be like Thomas Sankara. That has to be our bar. Compare mm -hmm. your country. Is my leader close to Thomas Sankara? <laughs> to what degree, right? We are not asking for a 10, you know? But we don't want minus 10 either, right? You hit a nerve, brother Adesoji. No. <laughs> Multiple nerves. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> so after declaring independence, Haiti, that is, uh, Jean Jacques de Céline took the French flag. And what did he do? He cut out the white part of it. Mm. And so the flag you have now is red and blue for a reason. Because by cutting out the part, that white part, it was effectively symbolizing the destruction and removal of whiteness in Haiti. Now, question is, how many African, how many African leaders, with the exception of Thomas Sankara, of course, have taken it upon themselves to redress the naming, the nomenclature of the imprint of colonialism and slavery on each of their country? I mean, um, Sankara famously renamed this country from Upper Volta in English, Haute Voltaire in, in French, to Burkina Faso, the land of the upright people. So yeah. you've just spoken about uh, the lady whose head is yeah, currently right. rest, mm -hmm. who's currently resting in you know one of the not one resting, of those castles in the is basement, in unrest. You know? You know? Yeah. One of one of those vaults here in the belly of the beast. And you have a monument as grandeur, as beautiful as the Mosi in Tunia, mm. which is the real name, yep. named after a colonialist. So well, apart from Sankara, obviously Sankara was also impressed by what uh, was done in Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, when they named it Haiti, they were honoring the Taino population that was completely exterminated, the indigenous population yeah. by the Europeans. And also, of course, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, 
by bringing up Ghana instead of to replace the Gold Coast. Gold Coast, yeah. Uh, so those things are very important, in fact. So historically, um, mm. those are some of the leaders that have done that, of course. Mm. Mm -hmm. So Kenya just stuck with uh, Kenya? Kenya, we have... Uh, we have Uganda. We, we have just we just Tanganyika. we just thought the white man's Kool Aid was so good. We just stuck yeah. with it. You know, I mean, ultimately, these should become part of a federated United States of Africa. Of course, you know, yes, United, you know, republics <clears throat> of Africa, whatever they end up calling it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's good that we the focus is now on the uh, France's role, hmm. but I think the United States' role should also be- I am, go I am calling oh, yeah. that. <laughs> no, 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 in fact, I wasn't referring to uh, us, our discussion, I was referring to the New York Times. Hmm. The New York Times should also do a similar piece. Show what the US has gotten. Exactly. Starting with Levi's. The US role in the destruction because of, like of we've media. like we've mentioned in other shows, I believe even last week in our show we've mentioned there's no separation between private industry and the US government. None. There's no separation. You can mm -hmm. have all the laws and policies that you want to play around with, decorate it all around, but logic wins and there's no separation. Because of yeah. your policies, these companies are able to operate elsewhere without um, being held accountable. So Levi's is one of the company in Haiti that is causing trouble there. Um, Brother Adesoji, I'm handing it back to you. No, let yes. me also add to what the sister just said. The, mm -hmm. the, uh, in terms of the government, uh, the, the famous bearded German, you know, mm. his name is uh, very malign sometimes, so I'll just call him the bearded German, <laughs> said uh, in uh, bourgeois societies, the government Thanks. is just a committee to advance the interest of the capitalists. Pr pr private exactly. capitalists. You know? That's yeah, what it is. It said that in the 19th century, it remains true up to today. It's a management entity. Exactly. To manage finance. Yeah. In terms of the how much were they paying in uh, so-called reparations to France, it came up to 80% yeah. of the national income of IET. Think about yeah. that. Imagine that. 80%. Can you imagine 80% mm. of your money going to servicing a credit card debt? Mm. Mm. I, want but brother, it, I want to put it in real terms for individuals, you know. The question I ask myself, uh, Alimadi, brother, I told you we are completely taking over your... No, no, <laughs> carry on. Carry on. He's, carry he's on. the one who's feeding us provocative. I'm topics. so sorry. Uh, carry on. The, the question I always have in my frustration is, what do we do? We know this is completely wrong. And for me, okay. I think we should save that too. If you're going to have a section, what is to be done? All right. Because if we go to what is to be done, it's going to be difficult to come back to the brother's question. All right, brother. I'm, I'm sure he still has a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, well, when I was writing up my. Another notes, revolution is due. That's all I have to say. I was thinking. Oh, no. In I'll, fact, that is the solution. But let the brother post. I was thinking, I was thinking, how do I keep. Um, I would need to have a fire extinguisher to hand because uh, <laughs> so you knew who you were dealing with. <laughs> so it doesn't okay. And in you know in Haiti again, I'll tie Haiti's independence again to Africa. <clears throat> in Haiti declaring independence, we have to understand that Haiti being almost a cash crop based yes. economy, mm -hmm. it was coupled with the isolation from France, the United States, Britain, wanting to, quote unquote, um, segregate Haiti away from its own investments in the Caribbean. I'm yep. sure there's no infection that carries over. There was no way for Haiti to have developed itself. Absolutely. And so, which goes back to one of the conversations we've had earlier, as in most cash crop based economy yep. Yep. really are not independent. Absolutely. Yep. And yep. you continue to be played upon by these so called developed countries coming to, you know, bringing. <laughs> 
what they call um, a, a primary primary economy. You know, just produce. Yeah. We'll take, refine, bring back to you. Right. Not to mention the tariffs. <clears throat> it's it's, it's on. brilliant. It's brilliant. What they have today is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Criminal. It's much better, it's much better than, uh, uh, than uh, enslavement, right? Yeah. Slavery, which was... Uh, <laughs> they took away the management. In, in, incorrect, you see? It's uh, obviously very brutal mm -hmm. when you have people being whipped, mm -hmm. you know, openly. <clears throat> That's just unacceptable. Now you don't have the whippings, but you have the structures. You mentioned the cash cross. That's one of the problems in, mm -hmm. in Haiti as well. Mm. When they had to grow cash crops to earn the money to pay the debt, you see? Mm. So they couldn't even grow food. So we are talking starvation. Mission, yeah. We're talking famine. We're talking now they need to import food. Think about that. And that's, of course, what's still going on in many African countries today. Mm -hmm. We spend $35 billion every year. Think about that. Importing food from the West. You know, independence is too generous of a word for our predicament. Mm -hmm. Because they are, <clears throat> they are using our land for their cash crops and their flowers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. This is the, here. Here's a call to action quickly, Adesoji, as you as you take a, a, a water break. Um, here's a call to action for us Africans. I just mentioned flowers and something very simple. If you're a revolutionary African who wants to see a change, do not buy flowers anymore. Just don't. Well, um, I was actually pointing to us the economy that um what's his name spoke to uh jared horn spoke to in white supremacy confronted when he mm -hmm. said you have settler communities mm -hmm. whose sole aim is to use local labor as in the case of kenya yes. where you have the local population <laughs> growing stuff they don't need to service the market in the west when one man pushed back against that model i.e. Uh, the, uh, what's his name? Um, Thessaly. That we would need to ensure that Haiti's interest is protected. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also bring it fast forward into Mugabe's idea as well, that give the people the land, let them decide what they will want to do with said land, and once that is the case, then obviously the country will grow from there. But as usual, the West steps in sanctions. Mm -hmm. So which brings me back to the case of Haiti now. Haiti is still isolated. Mm -hmm. And yet it is closer to the United States. Right. With the exception of Cuba. Geographically, right. Mm -hmm. You know, but cannot access the American market. Something that has been prevalent since the early 18th century, 19th century, and even now, even up till today. Right. And part of it is our own betrayal of our Haitian Exactly. Society. What do we the, do? The yes. African Union in particular mm -hmm. has been, and we obviously we have already spoken that one day we're going to have a conversation on uh, the alternative African Union. Yes. Uh, I think that's a serious thing we need to revisit. Uh, because, first of all, if Haiti was a member of the African Union, right, mm -hmm. it could benefit tremendously. Because now you have all these African states officially agitating on your behalf, right? Standing up on your behalf. You know, how dare you invade an African Union member country? Mm -hmm. See? So the U.S. would have to uh, recalibrate its conduct uh, toward uh, Haiti. So that alone has a liberating effect. And I think that's one of the reasons why the uh, African Union, at least the executive leadership, has been hesitant to admit Haiti because there's no other explanation. Oh, the only explanation okay. is that you are afraid of how the United States yeah. Uh, would react. So part of the failure, we also pin on the African Union. 
now there's effectively no government and there's silence total silence from the african union Imagine how can that. we sit back and watch a fellow african country go through such a crisis and not propose any major intervention it's preposterous major countries like south africa you know major countries like nigeria major countries like ghana even with their own crisis not of it is comparable to what's going on because uh, the in, west in, in has yeah because the 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 western countries the united states it being one of them because let's not forget that they are europeans european descendants right. very much so uh because they've in, infected africans with individualism right They've taken us Not from our that, culture shame as well. and shame. They've taken Not us shame. away from our culture of collectiveness, where we are always, we always have in mind the well-being of the collective. For me, if we do, when we do get this parallel entity, um, this entity that will be parallel to the AU, we can do all these things because who gives yes. power to government? The people, the people without the movement without, without the people supporting a government the government is useless absolutely right so yeah. we african people globally should get together put together this entity that is going to be parallel parallel to the au in as serving african nations and african people globally and we will take on haiti as one of us right. and all other brazil everywhere yep. where yep. black yep. people are and where their bodies have been used to build yeah. wealth. Yeah, I think we can start with uh, some sort of online petition campaign. Exactly. To get the AU or Africans involved in resolving the crisis in, uh, in Haiti. I was uh, listening to this, uh, forget his first name, Alina is this, uh, I'm probably not even pronouncing it correctly, an, an H Asian professor. I think he's at Fordham. And he said, the way they treat Haiti the way they do mm. is because they are the Africans of the Western Hemisphere. Hemisphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you could true. not put it any better than that. True, yeah, true. That's true, what the true. professor said. I said true. to myself, 100% spot on. And that's the problem. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So think about it. We grant observer status. Although I think now there's a question whether it should be revoked. Observer status to Israel. It's been revoked. In the African Union. But we yeah. granted it. Yeah. Oh, you right? did, did you not see the Imagine. video in South Africa? Yeah. We granted that and we denied Imagine membership that. to Haiti. Come on, Africa. What's wrong with us? There's what reason does Israel have? Anyway, brother, this would be acceptable. Right? Before we go down another rabbit hole. So, I mean, looking at Haiti, looking at Africa, so if you're pointing fingers, I mean, we're looking at vested interest. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, who are the vested interest in this particular debacle that is facing Haiti and by extension, the African continent at the moment? I, I just want to read a quick summary. Um, when I was doing my research on this, this was one of my readings, um, Born in Blackness by Howard French. Um, and in here, he quotes C.L.R. James from his book, Black Jacobins. I'm going to read that, and it will give you the players in a quick sum summary. In August 1791, after two years of the French Revolution and its repercussions in San Domingo, the slaves revolted. The struggles lasted for 12 years. And I years. hate that he refers to them as slaves. And we, slave Africans. We now know better and we're doing better. No, no, I'm the, saying uh, Howard right? French. Howard French should know better. You know, because he's quoting. Say. No, he's quoting. Uh, oh, I see. Yes, okay. he's quoting. Yeah, Correct. but you could put it in. We could put it in parentheses. Too. Yes, but guys, we 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 are going for the shadows and not the body. Again, our brother Milka Cabral warned us against that. Let's let's stick to the quotes. Oh no, I mean we're making valid <laughs> comments. We're <laughs> but go ahead, continue. Yeah. You've taken me off the floor. I will yeah. start again. That was yeah. just the first sentence. In right. August 1791, after two years of the French Revolution and its repercussions in San Domingo, the slaves revolted. The struggles lasted for 12 years. The slaves defeated in turn the local whites and the soldiers of the French monarchy. A Spanish invasion, 
a British expedition of some 60,000 men and a French expedition of similar size under Bonaparte's brother-in-law. The defeat of Bonaparte's expedition in 1803 resulted in the establishment of the Negro state of Haiti, which has lasted to this day. I will add, and then steps in the, the United States when France is giving up. But brother, um, Ali Madi and Adi Soji. <coughs> France, <coughs> the United States, and the African Union. Um, right now, yes. Uh, yes. Responsible for the current predicament. Yes. In, in Haiti. Look at that, and which means all African US, countries, all African 54 Union. African countries. No, sadly, the African Union does not even present Africans. You know, that's the sad part. You know? But here's, here's the thing, Brother Ali Madi. If we have an entity that African nations know represents them, mm -hmm. and it's not doing the work of representing them, don't you think that a brave leader in one of the nations in Africa would step up and say, African Union, we need you to support Haiti? Sankara said that. So Sankara is gone. He was taken away Sankara because the others could individual. not support we him. We need to promote this concept from the <clears throat> grassroots up. So you they know, are all the responsible under the AU for what is going on in Haiti. Uh, I think we're giving them too much credit, right? When we say responsible, it means you have some power, first mm. of all. And as Nkrumah said, in neocolonialism, the last stage of imperialism, part of the most worst thing about neocolonialism is that you have power without responsibility. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what Nkrumah was describing. <laughs> They're there in office, but they really have no power. They have no responsibility. They are much weaker than many of us give them credit for. They are ripe for us to promote a grassroots revolution throughout Africa. They're very weak. But like the minute we start focusing person. on creating the alternative African Union, I think we will rewrite the history of the continent right. as African people. <clears throat> but know? like every other human being, every individual, you have a brain and that's where your power lies. Yeah, many of them want to stay alive, unfortunately. <clears throat> I think Sankara was willing to lay down everything, including his life. He was. He knew the cost. So was those Lumumba. others. Those others. So was Malcolm. Ready. So was Dr. King. Yep. So was Harriet Tubman. So was every revolutionary that stood up. Brother yep. Adesoji. Yep. 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 <clears throat> yes. Um, in asking that question, I was actually minded to say, with regards to vested interest, even uh, Kwame Nkrumah said it in class struggle. He says, because you have neocolonials who have been educated in the West, mm -hmm. yes. they will champion the interest of the Western power. So sometimes it's not just the leaders. The leaders are just figureheads. They're not. Yes, you're right. <clears throat> essentially how uh, Brother Milton just described them. They're just, you know. And we saw them go to the African, um, U.S. African Leadership Summit. We saw all uh, those African exactly. companies go they, there. That's who so, we. So, I mean. Pushing yeah. each other. To be first to take a photograph with Biden. <laughs> exactly. Imagine you know. that. Like <sighs> so so I suppose if we throw darts at them, you're just throwing darts at a paper cardboard. Essentially, <laughs> you won't bring down anything. So the reason I ask the que the vested question uh, vested interest question is I was talking to someone in the course of the week and he was we're going back and forth about the power behind the monarchy and what have you. Mm. And the guy said, you do realize that they're just part of the piece. They're, just a, they're, they're basically just a piece in the entire jigsaw puzzle. They're entertainers who are I making said, a crazy amount of money. Go on, Adiso, just sorry. Yeah, so, so, I said, <clears throat> so I said, okay, uh, tell me more. So he says, there is a company that insures the ships. Ah. Lloyds of London is still there. Right. Unilever is still there. They've morphed. They've gone into other businesses. So they've started hiding their hands. Mm -hmm. And um, in coming to terms with what he said, said, wow, that's powerful. So which then ties in with the 
what uh, Michel Trouet says in his brilliant book, Silencing the Past, where he says, history is about, the power of history in itself is about its invincibility. Right. It is the cause of every scholar and every historian, be it professional or, I'm paraphrasing now, someone who just has basic interest to expose the roots of what you're looking at. Because if we don't, you keep chasing the wrong thing. It's like a dog that has a bone tied to a truck. Yep. And you keep chasing that truck. You're not going to catch up to that bone. But meanwhile, the guy who tied the bone is the guy with the power. Yeah. Because he <clears throat> sent you on a wild goose chase. Hmm? And so Haiti's problem is not basically it's not it's not structural it's business look at the people who are invested in who are invested in haiti the banks the companies even the aid organizations it is incumbent on the aid organizations that any area they go into especially the un sponsored ones that the thing doesn't work out because they get a chance to go in every time, you know, there is quote unquote an <laughs> emergency, you know. So which brings me to this question. Speaking of emergency, is it not now an emergency since the killing of Moise? Moise was killed mm -hmm. almost three years ago now, right. mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And so like Haiti, most of African most of African countries have a leadership vacuum. So, what is it about the African mindset that means we do not take agency? Mm. It's been over sixty years. In the case of Haiti, is more than a century. What's going on? I'll, I'll give you a small example that is relatable to today's world. And as we hit a few minutes before the hour in closing, I'm going to suggest to both of you brothers that we do a Haiti part two where we focus on the, the interests within the country, the businesses, the aid agencies. The show should just focus on that so that we can see how the money is being drained and what they're doing to harm that nation. The punishment in our title, the actual punishment that is going on. We should talk about that in a, in a show by itself. But to give you, um, our community, a relatable example, in the organization that I work for as my nine to five, I have been um, causing some good trouble, right, for diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, because this is what we are doing now under the name of liberation. That's what that is. DEIA is liberation uh, in, in fancy, acceptable words to white men. Um, and the black people in that company have all moved away from me because according to them, I am causing, I, I, I have no tact. Um, I am abrasive. I am making them uncomfortable. It is the way you say it. I am told it is the way you say it as if there's any better way to say that white man, your white supremacist system is oppressing me. How do you say that in a better way? So when you take that and you expand it to the larger picture where black people are just interested in their own success, how am I going to pay bills? How am I going to get that promotion? I want my career. It, it goes to African presidents. That's what they're thinking. It goes to those businessmen in Kenya, in, in Ghana, in Nigeria. That's what they're thinking. Instead of thinking, when do we end the oppression and exploitation of our people? All right. So I I think, I mean, clearly, Haiti needs a revolution, mm -hmm. just like most African countries need a revolution. I think it's not even worth uh, spending much time critiquing the symptoms of the dysfunction that we see. So for me, you know, the aid agencies, the banks, and all these are just symptoms of the condition. These are like... Um, the you know, shadows have, that Milka Cabral was talking about. Right. So you have the wounds, untreated wounds. Obviously, insects are going to 
start consuming mm. the wounds. So I see all these as mm. insects. I think My what goodness. we need to do is heal the wounds. And in Africa or Haiti, we cannot heal the wounds unless we're in control of the politics. Yes. Because then the politics determines what is acceptable and what is not. And I keep going back to Thomas Sankara. He started healing the wounds in Burkina Faso. He changed the mindset of everybody very quickly. So the, the hypothetical example that you gave, if in an environment like a Burkina Faso, those people who are their own worst enemies, their mindset would change also. Yeah. So to me, it's much more important to change the environment, the controlling environment. And that can only be brought about, I think, by revolution. And mm. the best example was, uh, of course, Burkina Faso. That's what Haiti needs. That's what every African country needs. If we had 10 Sankaras in Africa, we would see some serious changes yes. mm. on the continent. Because at the end of the day, as Professor uh, Nicholas said, we discussed a few weeks ago, Africa can industrialize. Africa can develop within a generation. Mm -hmm. In fact, he's so optimistic. He said within 10 to 15 years. Think about that. Meaning we could still be around to see this transformation. You know? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Well, um, on that... Uh, Sankara very... did it in four years. Mm hmm on that very happy note, um, could you, any final words, uh, Sister Nduku? Um, I feel like we need more time on IET. Why? Because we want to educate. Our, our goal in Kumbukeni is to decolonize minds, right? We have Africans walking around believing this narrative that IET is to blame for, for the state of their, of their, um, their situation right now. Mm -hmm. um, so in order to decolonize, we need to show the parties. Let's go for the big ballers. If the companies are, are just the shadows, let's go for the nations that are giving them, providing them with policy that they can operate there and talk about it in detail um, at another show so that we all understand exactly who is to blame. Um, because if we're going to have a revolution, we need to go to know who we're going for. Brother Milton? I think the people we need to focus on is the, and this is of course the challenging part, how do we communicate, uh, how do we provoke the masses in IET? You know, yeah. because if their mindset is in the right direction, they themselves will liberate themselves. Uh, going after the city banks and all these types, you know, we could shame them. It could only ameliorate their excesses mm. a little bit, but they're not going to do a revolution against themselves, you see? So at the mm. end of the day, it's the people that will have to liberate themselves. If but we how do have... we spark that revolution is the question. And how that, do we that's spark what I'm it? Saying. We need mm -hmm. to find a way to communicate, you know, directly with Haitian sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. um, I would be, I think that would be a much more effective uh, way of transforming the society. If we can find some who are working because they're, you know, there are many of them who know what the problem is, mm. you know, so if we can engage them in conversation and multiply this conversation, you know, so that if they know that there are people all over the world rooting for that, for them, mm -hmm, yeah, that mm -hmm. also sometimes inspires action. I, li I like your idea of mm -hmm. uh, starting a, a, an online petition campaign. Yep. I think that's where we start with that one. Absolutely. Um, and very and we, need to, we need to bring a Walter Rodney groundings in Haiti. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. So it can be done. And we are, of course, rooting for our sisters and brothers in Haiti. Nothing is permanent. Although the Europeans want it, give the impression that that's a permanent condition. Of course, it's not permanent. These are people who are able to defeat Europeans in the Haitian Revolution, right? So they have it within themselves, the capacity. They just need to be reminded constantly. If the people, sister and brother, woke up every day 
in Haiti. And before they prayed, if the first thing they said was, we smashed them in 1801, every day, <laughs> every Haitian would have a different mindset. I said, true. If every parent was telling their kids, we smashed them in 1801, we can do it again. We smashed them in 1801. If we can wake up and pray to all these gods every day, why do we make that part of our prayer? Hmm. It's, it's funny you say that because that's what Twisant did. Every morning he woke up and said, someone has to stand up against them. There someone has to. Someone. Ha Every morning he repeated it to there himself I, I until he finally that, said that someone is me. That should be your, your, your next essay, sister. Because I know you write on Medium too. That should be your, your next essay. On Twisant <laughs> or on the repetitive reminder? Yes, the revolution. reminder. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So yes, um, my final word, as uh, Stokely Carmichael, Kwame Ture would say, organize, organize, organize. Exactly. Look at that. Because if you do, yep. you're on the path to freedom. Yep, 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 yep. Actually, Kwame Ture was very funny. Whenever <laughs> people called him, you know, you know the first thing he said when he picked up the phone? Are you ready for a revolution? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And then after that, he would say, hello. <laughs> <laughs> but look at that. That's again, it goes back to what we are saying. Of course. With Toussaint, the repetitive reminder yes. that this yeah. is what I'm here for. Absolutely. Oh, that's that's nice. So Kwame Ture, <laughs> Toussaint, and um, who was the other one? And, and then the Haitians, that they should take it yes. on. Um, yeah. But um, yeah. just to remind our audience, I'm writing that down before I forget it, with everything I have in my mind. Patreon.com, please join our family on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Kumbukeni. Subscribe to Kumbukeni on YouTube. The numbers are growing. We thank you all for joining our community. We yes, appreciate we you all. We do. And we look forward to providing more knowledge and helping us all, including myself and my brothers, um, to decolonize our minds so that we can finally take our place in humanity, Absolutely. our rightful place. Sikunjema. Happy Asante. Mother's Asante. Day. Asante. Yes, happy Mother's Day and my blessed mother with the ancestors. Blessings to you. Happy Mother's Day. Yes.